welcome to Ticket Manager's All Access Interview Series, engaging leaders from across the sports marketing spectrum to identify and explore critical issues in the business of sports, entertainment, sponsorship, activation, ticketing, hospitality, and even more than that. I'm your host, Jim Andrews. Joining me on this episode is Garth Kadutsen, Chief Marketing Officer of Aflac. He's been with Aflac for two years, but in his nearly 20-year career on the agency side, uh, that included lots of work with the brand over the last decade. So he's a great deal of experience with this company that has a fascinating brand marketing story. Uh, so I'm very excited to, to welcome Garth um, and just say it's a real pleasure to have you with us. Great. Uh, thanks, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. Can't wait to, to dig into some topics with you. Yeah, terrific. Well, why don't we just start off with just an, an overview of of Aflac's business, uh, you know who the target market is, competitive set, how you take your services to market, and anything that we you know maybe don't real about realize about the brand, but but probably should. To start off the the market, I would say the market is is huge. Reason why you know where that opportunity um, lies is that health insurance was never designed to cover everything. And most American families don't have a thousand dollars in savings, you know, should, you know, should, should they have some unexpected health expenses arise. So, you know, and I, I won't give any uh, competitors uh, the free impressions by, by naming them, but I will tell no you problem. that, that um, their awareness is all significantly lower than ours. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to to do an interview like this without retelling it, at least at a high level, the story of the Aflac duck and, and yeah, how the, that came about and, and just how it truly is a, an American business, you know, advertising success story. So back in going back to 1999. So just before um, Y2K, which we can all probably uh, remember a little bit, uh, Aflac's awareness was in around the six to 7% range. So a national company, doing business in you know all 50 states and even outside of that and and in Japan as well but relatively well known you know nascent categories supplemental health insurance uh, an agency Kaplan Thaler run by uh, Linda Kaplan Thaler came in and pitched Dan and Kathleen Amos so it's the the CEO and and his his wife Kathleen she was running marketing at the time and with a, a couple of different campaigns, one was starring Ray Romano, who was a big at the time. It was everybody loves Raymond, you know, number right. one, number two, whatever show in America, you know, and, and advertising, of course, lots of times we will lean into to celebrities. It helps with some instant awareness. And this this duck who who quacked, you know, Aflac, who just said one word and they tested it. And while the the Aflac duck campaign tested through the roof and the uh, Ray Romano campaign tested well, there was still a lot of risk involved and in, in people, you know, frankly thought this CEO was crazy when he brought it to him. They said, what are you thinking? You know, a duck that, that quacks the name, but he said, I have this data that says that our target audience, that Americans out there will, you know, they'll remember this and and this will work for us. And, you know, we've always been a company that, that made decision based on, on data and took, took a little risk. And I say a little risk because the campaign debuted New Year's Eve, January you know, first Y2K and not a lot of advertisers wanted to to advertise at that time because everybody thought the world was ending, right? So why do we want our brand message out there? But because advertising was so cheap, the CEO, Dan Amos, took this very calculated risk and said, well, you know what, what are we going to lose, right? And for that reason, because so many other advertisers were being risk averse at that time, CNN kept running the spot over and over and over again. We got all these free impressions. And we had more inquiries to Aflac January 1st, 2000, than we had the entire year of 1999. So, you know, inbound uh, phone calls and, and visits to the website. So very quickly, um, they knew that, that um, we were, they were onto something. Now, fast forward three years later, 2003, and brand awareness goes from that 6 or 7% to 91. So another company at that time who had 91% awareness in the United States was, was Adidas. And like, who doesn't know Adidas, right? So to say that this supplemental health insurance company from Columbus, Georgia, goes from essentially nobody knowing us to as many people as, you know, one of the, the larger, more well-known brands in the country or in the world was, was pretty amazing. So now we find ourselves, oftentimes, you know, you mentioned competitive set, 
well, we have a, a, a set of more direct competitors who are also selling products similar to ours. We often get confused with the Geico's of the world, the state farms, these other big insurers who are out advertising, spending a bunch of money. And, uh, you know, we'll hear things like, oh, you're, you're, you're just like Geico. You've got a gecko. They've got a gecko. You've got a duck. You're probably selling homeowners insurance. You're probably selling renters insurance, car insurance. You know, the, the only thing I would say that, that we're, you know, similar to is that, you know, we have famous mascots and we're in insurance, but what another interesting thing, people think that we spend as much money as, as those, those brands as well. But actually, if you look at, um, Kantar measured, uh, media data from 2021, Geico spent around $3.1 billion and we spent less than a hundred million. So it just, uh, again, going back to that amazing American marketing success story of we're still spending a fraction, but we're, we're such a well-known brand. So it really is a, is an honor to get to, to be here and, and lead the brand team. You know, you, you shared that statistic with me when we talked a few weeks ago and, and I was just shocked by that, you know, mm-hmm. as a television viewer, as a, as a sports television viewer, I would have assumed, you know, almost parody between those two brands. Yep. Uh, so, you know, kudos to you, obviously. And uh, one of my favorite little anecdotal things that comes up, and I, I one of the things I told you the other day too, is that I work on Saturdays, and I, I love that about my job. You know, we're so involved in in college football that I, I spend my days, you know, watching. I wake up watching game day, and then I'll I'll go to a restaurant and sit and watch people watch college football to see what what gets them you know, interested what they pay attention to, what gets them to go up to the bathroom to to step away from the TV for a while. Uh, but my favorite thing is when I hear people either say to me when I say that I, I work for Aflac or I'll see it on Twitter on Saturdays, they'll say, I can't, you know, I, I just saw that that uh, Aflac commercial with Nick Saban for the third time on the game. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 sick of it. And I, I kind of laugh because... <laughs> Um, a, I'm, I'm think I'm, I'm glad that they don't like our commercial and that they're talking about it. So that's that's good, good free press for us. But two, I know that we don't have the money to afford to run that commercial on, you know, one game three times, you know. But but it is so memorable, and they 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 almost think that they they there they do think that they see it more than they do. And we really have been able to build up that equity in college football to where we come across as a big fish in a big pond when really we're spending like a, like a smaller fish or at least a, a smaller medium sized fish. Yeah. I mean, what, what an enviable position to be. And I, I know lots of folks who uh, sit in, sit in your chair and other companies who would, who would love to have, uh, have that situation. And, and that also then kind of begs the question. So with that, you know, you, you want to be judicious where you're making those media buys. So, so why mm-hmm. college sports and, and, and college football, you know, what, what are the goals and, and objectives, you know, not just obviously the, the media buys, but then, you know, with, with your sponsorships, NCAA, some of the other events we're about to talk. Yeah. About. Yep. We know through, you know, historical data, and we've been involved in college football for probably around two, two decades now from an advertising standpoint. And we've, you know, been advertising on Saturdays for a long time. We've done deals with the Heisman, but we more recently in the last, I'd say going back to 2020, it was 2019 when I was working at a publicist advertising agency. And uh, we came up with the first Nick Saban Aflac campaign. And that was really, you know, the the data was starting to prove out as we were getting more and more data on consumers that really college sports and specifically college football, Americans who buy or are more likely to buy AFLAC policies or be AFLAC policy holders index high for college sports and specifically college football. So we you know, made that decision under the leadership of the CMO at the time, Shannon Watkins, now over at, at Jordan Brand at, at Nike said, We've got to do, you know, we we've been doing a great job of surrounding college football with media and some sponsorships, but let's really go all in and start to partner with the bigger entities. So we started working with the SEC, which is, you know, the preeminent, you know, the the probably the the strongest conference in college sports. And then now we're doing a deal with College uh, Game Day. I think it'll be our third year with Game Day, and then bringing in Deion Sanders. Right, we're just getting more and more into it, but without spending any more money. I think we're just going about it in a smarter way and being very purposeful with the entities that we decide to work with, the bigger, you know, more popular entities like a game day. And then um, from a talent perspective, the people who get talked about and frankly are are good at talking about Aflac and Dion and, and Coach Saban. 
Well, and so often in, in, in the sponsorships, as, as you know, too, it, it, it's not about spending more money because we all know budgets are, mm -hmm. uh, are limited, but it's about spending it, it spending it smarter, right? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, to that point, you recently announced two additions to this, mm -hmm. uh, this portfolio, one title sponsorship of the college football kickoff game in Atlanta, and, and two, and a really interesting one, the title sponsorship, again, of the first ever NCAA regular season women's basketball game in Paris, the, the Affleck We Play featuring Notre yeah. Dame in South Carolina. I'd love to hear a little bit of, of kind of the origin story of, of how those uh, uh, came about and, and yeah. what, you, what your plans are for them. Great question. You know, they really both came down to relationships and these were not random pitches, you know, cold call emails with decks, you know, and I, you know, other people listening to this podcast are probably like me and get maybe dozens of those per day, right? But I think, and and sometimes those those end up in in a partnership. The, the batting average is probably low, but the, the first one, the formerly uh, Chick-fil-A kickoff game, which is run by Peach Bowl Inc., um, and now the Aflac kickoff game, the the story behind that, there were a number of uh, uh, business people from Georgia, and the Peach Bowl, of course, is run out of, out of Atlanta, Georgia, were ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange um, about a year ago. And Gary Stoken, the CEO of Peach Bowl, was there, happens to run into my boss, Virgil Miller, who's the president of Aflac US. And Gary said, you know, Virgil, uh, you know, nice to meet you, first of all. Second of all, Chick-fil-A is going to continue to sponsor the Peach Bowl, but the sponsorship opportunity for the kickoff game is coming up, and we think that you would be perfect. Aflac could, I think, rightfully sponsor any big college football event, right? We've got the equity there. People would would expect us to show up where college football shows up. We already talked about that, you know, looking like a big fish in a big pond. But because we are a little fish when it comes to the budgets, at least compared to the other big in, insurance sponsors, we've really got to choose wisely. And this one made so much sense for us because the Peach Bowl Inc. is college football's most charitable organization. The the largest benefactor of that charity and that generosity is the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center at Children's Health Care of Atlanta, uh, a wing, if you will, of the Children's Health Care of Atlanta that Aflac helped to, to fund and to date have given something like $186 million between Aflac employees and our independent sales agents around the, the country. So us being able to come together to make this more than just a football game with a sponsor was really special and important to us. And it's in our backyard and we can get employees involved and, and bring them up there and, and have them work to really help, you know, do two things. One, raise awareness of the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center and donations of the, of the Cancer Center, but also to let people know that, you know, uh, Aflac, you know, we were founded on, uh, you know, our our development of cancer insurance back in, in 1957. So, you know, really the more insurance we sell and the more cancer insurance we sell, the more we're able to give back to the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. So really that one was a match made in heaven. And when you put all of the pros and the cons on the on the board, there really weren't any cons. And there were a lot of pros. So everybody's been super excited at, at Aflac in, in the industry, and we couldn't be more uh, happy to be a part of that one. And then We Play is just so unique, right? I mean, you talk about uh, the first of its kind, women's college basketball in Paris, and it's, you know, Notre Dame in Paris, and Don Staley, you know, the in my mind, the the biggest, you know, like perennial star of of college basketball right now. Um, and we we saw an announcement one day of this this basketball game, and we said, you know what, we should look into that. So I'm going on to like who's 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 putting this thing on, and and come to find it's uh, this uh, uh, Leah Miller Tooley. She's the CEO of Complete Sports Management, and I did some some research around her organization and what they do, and they put on a lot of these great events. I thought, you know what, we really should get involved in that. So I don't recall if I sent an email to like the info at complete sports mm -hmm. management or if I called the 800 number, but I, this is the case where like I'm cold calling, right? I feel like I'm the, I'm Being the salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me back. Leah called me back within a couple hours that first day that, that I learned about it. And I said, you know what? I don't know what, what the terms are, but would really like the opportunity to work with you and be, and, and 
be the main sponsor of this event. She said, funny you should mention that. I was looking to reach out to you because Don Staley said you should reach out to Aflac before you reach out to anyone else. So just going back to the idea of, you know, relationships, and I think some of the some of the best ones come down to, I don't want to say who you know, but what you know about who you know, right? And what's going to be important to them. Because like I said, these these both felt like no-brainers from the beginning. And yeah, we're we're just super excited about these two new partnerships. So you mentioned Don Staley. You talked about Nick Saban earlier. Mm-hmm. You've also uh, have relationships with with Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, yeah. uh, Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski. So you know, those, uh, you know, and again, memorable mm-hmm. uh, TV spots uh, fe- featuring all of those. But mm-hmm. and you you, de- you obviously just touched on it with in 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 Dawn's case. But those relationships bring more than just hey, an, an, an endorsement and, and an appearance in, in, in your ads uh, to the yep. table of Aflac. Can you talk a little bit uh, more about that? Yeah, you know, and it's been something we've been doing back, you know, from my early days with the brand in, you know, 2019 and working with Nick Saban and and wanting to make it more than just doing the TV spots. We would, you know, he, he just like Coach K, you know, when you think about leadership, like those are two of the names that, that you know, rise to to the top of the list. So we brought, we you know, starting four or five years ago, would bring Nick Saban in to talk to leaders at Aflac about leadership. We've supported his Nick's Kids Foundation. Now we're starting to get more involved in the the Saban Center. I just learned people have probably heard about STEM. I, there's sure. a new there's a new thing now, STEAM. STEAM. And so yeah. they, which which adds art into it, which which to me I think is really powerful as a a more creative person who, you know, wasn't, wasn't the greatest math or science student growing up to know that now people are out there are, are bringing in arts and those more soft skills um, into, into educating young kids. So really excited to be involved with, with the whole Saban family, both, you know, coach Saban and, and, and miss Terry there. I would say it really started to ramp up when we started the relationship with, with coach prime Deion Sanders. And this came about you know, shortly after the murder of George Floyd and uh, our, a, a contractor of ours or a consultant, and he's become a, a mentor and a dear friend of mine, uh, Daryl D.C. Cobbin. You know, we were trying to figure out how we could add something to what had become the Aflac Duck uh, Coach Saban kind of recruiting campaign that would uh, help keep it up to date. And D.C. said, well, you know what? Deion Sanders just took a job at Jackson State, and this is before his first full year. I think it may have even been before that shortened uh, four-game season that he played in. And it's it's he's about to become a big deal, and not really not many people had heard about him going to Jackson State because I think people didn't think of him as a legitimate coach, even though he'd been coaching his kids since since they were very very small. In fact, Shadur, who's now the starting quarterback out in Boulder, I think Deion has been his coach from from day one since he started as a little kid but we we brought him in because you know and and layered into the creative some little hbcu cues because he was at jackson state of course a historically black college and that was really you know us trying to say that you know we were we were supporting you know diversity and education in America, but also supporting him and his purpose as he was then helping us support our purpose and helping to eradicate medical debt. So it started to become this thing, uh, almost kind of a, a, a you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours, but in a more meaningful way. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just transactional and, and, and money. And, you know, and putting Dion, you know, in a commercial, a national commercial with millions of dollars behind it every Saturday next to, you know, who many consider, you know, the greatest football coach of all time, certainly more rings than any, any coach who's, who's currently coaching today. And he said that helped validate him and it helped elevate his profile at Jackson state. And now he's coaching at a, at a power five and able to, you know, uh, affect and reach even, even more people with his message. We started to see, you know what, like when we're partnering with people who we have a shared purpose or or shared beliefs, shared values, they can mean mean so much more. And now, you know, when when my boss Virgil shows up at a, an annual event for the National Forum for Black Public Administrators, Dion comes with them, and and they both um, 
both both take the stage at the same time and we you know we show up at the children's hospital of mississippi and have dion come with us to hand out um my special aflac ducks which is a, a robotic uh duck that we create that helps uh, kids with cancer and sickle cell disease Anyways, Dion, you know, came to us with the hospital with with Virgil and handed those out, and we didn't pay him an extra dime. And I'm, it, lots of times you have to build these things into the contract, right? And I'll, right. I'll, I'll say even knowing that that Coach Primes and Coach Staley and Coach K and and Coach Saban's agents might hear this podcast to say that we ask them to do things for us sometimes that aren't in the contract they're not getting paid for, and they they do it. They say yes. We've now done these my special Aflac duck deliveries to children's hospitals with Don and and coach prime and coach Sabin and and you know we asked them to do it because you know it's 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 really it's, it's charity on both of our parts right we weren't making any money off of it they're not making any money off of it but we're putting on these events in the communities where they where they live and where they coach and where they teach and you know we like to say that we show up you know in in all of the communities that we serve and when we can do that with with our partners who are in our tv spots that just makes those things that much more meaningful for all of us yeah it's it's that you know like classic win-win one plus one equals much more than more than yeah. two you want to put it but uh but making yep. sure that you're you're really being able to take advantage of all of those those assets yeah yeah so i just let one last point on that you know when we are thinking about working with somebody new before we start to ask how are their acting skills Mm-hmm. Or you know some of these other things we look at. You know what are the what are the organizations that they're involved in? What do they do when they're not coaching or or teaching? What do what are their family members involved in? Right, and so then we end up doing things with like the Emily Shashevsky Foundation and and helping support that cause and Don Staley's uh, Inner Soul Foundation. It was my team just did a a shoe drive and and brought them up to her and presented a check to her her organization Inner Soul, which is really you know meaningful for them and and for us to be able to just continue to to support to support our talent. So more things like that, I think, to come from us. And if you ever see us announce something with a new talent, there are always going to be other things outside of marketing and advertising as well. You mentioned early on, you know, obviously with supplemental insurance, that's that's a very broad audience uh, of, of mm-hmm. people who, who who need that product, which leads me to ask, obviously, with, with an audience that large, not all of them are sports fans. You know, obviously, we're, we're all about sports, uh, you know, on, the, on this podcast, but you know, entertainment enters the picture, uh, mm-hmm. you know, non-sports things as well. Are there, does Aflac have relationships outside of sports or, or any plans to to look outside of sports for, for partnerships? Yeah. So just from a pure media standpoint, you know, uh, I would say, you know, anywhere between, you know, 40 to 60% of that spend could be considered sports or sports adjacent. That's going to depend on, depend on the the year and what sponsorships we may have going on. But so a couple of things we have in development right now, we do have what we would consider more evergreen commercials in production, which don't have sports celebrity talent in them. So more of a focus on the Aflac duck, but still that same message of, you know, Health insurance wasn't designed to cover everything, but Aflac's there to help with those expenses that health insurance doesn't cover. Uh, we also do have a new partnership, which I can't announce yet, but with a, a large entertainment entity that everyone listening to this call, even people around the world would would know about, you know, that that uh has has you know their property shows up around the country, you know, where uh we have you know agents and, and policyholders certainly you know, in, in uh, uh, all 50 states. So that's going to be be a good one. And there's another celebrity we're going to be working with who everyone on this call call would know, one of the more well-known uh, current self-made entrepreneurs who's going to be helping us with recruiting campaign, not recruiting for headquarters employees, but as we are always continuing to bring in, you know, more new people into our independent agent field force. Um, new campaign coming out there. So super excited. Just shot with this person in Vegas last week. And then we're actually going back to Vegas in two weeks to shoot with the uh, entertainment property I mentioned uh, earlier. And with both of those, it's kind of exciting. We're starting to expand or we've been for the last couple of years, expanding our in-house studio. A gentleman by the name of uh, Jared Martin has, has built this thing from you know, 10 or a dozen people up to to close to 30 people now. And they 
they ran the whole production with the the celebrity I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in Vegas, and then they're traveling back out to shoot with the uh, the entertainment property. So we're just able to do more uh, with less because we've been building up that internal capability. Certainly intrigued, and we'll be uh, looking for the announcements on uh, on, on those partnerships uh, coming up here pretty soon. Garth, before I let you go, you know, question that I like to ask people who you know, sit in in your in your seat, and that is, you know, you, you deal with so many different types of rights holders, media outlets, agencies. Mm-hmm. In general, is there anything that you wish the folks who were either you know, currently working with or or people who are, who are bringing opportunities to you in terms of partnerships, something that either they understood better about you know, kind of the, the corporate side of, of the coin or, or things that they did differently so that, you know, not just you, but but their, their other partners could get more out of their relationships. This one will come across as a little simple, but, you know, do your homework, you know, no, no form emails. I get probably two dozen of those and five cold calls a day. You know, we talked earlier in this call about the, the, we play and the, the kickoff games par- partnerships. And obviously not everybody's going to have that kind of you know, lightning strike and be in the same room with two people, you know, randomly and, and have that, that background and that, that connection. But by, you know, lots of times when people are are reaching out to try to start a conversation about whether it's, it's a partnership or a technology or a, or a media buy, they'll say, Hey, I'd like to get some of your time so you can tell me what I can do for you. And then, you know, so I say, do your homework, you know, spend, 45 minutes listening to, you know, if it's a publicly traded company, their most recent earnings report, you can learn a lot from that. And you can understand not only what may be in the mind of the marketing people you're talking to, but what's in the mind of their COO or their CFO or their board, right? Like that is, that is gold. And if you listen to somebody's 45 minute, hour and a half, however long it is, um, quarterly earnings report, and you say there are things that I know that my company or my property or my technology or my whatever can do to help solve some of those problems. That's where I that's where I would start and come with come with ideas. Don't come with asks because time is our most precious commodity. Yeah, no, that, that, I think that's great advice and and great way to to wrap up our conversation. Just want to again thank you so much for for joining us. And like I said, we'll be certainly looking out for for everything that you've got coming up here in the in the college football season that's uh, just about to start with 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 your game in in, in Atlanta as well as your your other news. So um, uh, we'll be paying attention. And just want to say thanks again for for being on the podcast today. Great, thanks, Jim. Appreciate your time. All right. And on behalf of everyone at Ticket Manager, thank all of you for watching and listening. And please join us again for the next episode in the All Access interview series.